just to start off with, who still buys DVDs? Who's when was the last time you guys bought a DVD? Anyone? I bought one a couple of weeks ago. I bought a Turbo Kid on DVD. <laughs> Was that for you? Absolutely. I used to have a, a DVD collection. It it had to have had 2,000 DVDs in it quite easily. And I've been giving them away and, and clearing them out. And I'm purely going to buy my very, very, very favourite films on Blu-ray just in one, one stand. But yeah, the money I've spanked on those is phenomenal. But no, not really. What about you, Craig? You, you still buying any or you're purely digital? <laughs> Uh, I think the last one I bought was Journeyman because I had a hand in designing the cover. <laughs> I've seen and, and I think that's probably the what we. I mean, it's probably the same for a lot of people. I mean, I've same as Stu had massive DVD and video collections over the years, and I've kind of just yeah let them all go. I've I've ended up flogging you know stuff on Music Magpie for ten twenty p a DVD, and just kind of like what's the point? But I, st- I still like to kind of own the, the physical movies you know in terms of my favorites and i've been kind of whittling my collection down as well probably for about 10 years and I've, i still own probably about 100 100 films but when i buy films now it's on on steelbook and I, back in the beginning of the summer zavi um started a, a pre-order for a a run of steelbook blu-rays of each of the 11 star wars movies that have come out so far so i thought it was a, a good time just to kind of test the water really and see what people thought about still book collecting is it just me or is there are there other people out there buying them and there, there is a, a, a kind of a healthy community and you know there's a few of the guys in some of the black series um groups i see and i see them across some of the the steel books as well so there's definitely a little bit of crossover certainly with these dvds of uh, sorry these, these steel books of, of star wars coming out it's, it's, it's drawn a few people out of the woodwork so like i said i've i've spent probably 20 odd years buying or more of buying up collections of dvds and then selling them off and used to go to hmv on a saturday afternoon with my mates and end up walking out with a bag of movies for you know 20 or 30 quid and, and just yeah a lot of them just would sit on the shelf and I'd quite often just buy stuff for the sake of it and some of the ones I remember selling off didn't even come out of the cellophane so it was kind of got a bit silly when Netflix and everything else came around so I I just started to concentrate on the movies that I liked but then I think it was about seven or eight years ago I discovered Steelbooks and I think they've been around for a while I think the first one was back in 2005 it was a a PS2 or a PlayStation game called Killzone 2 which was the first movie to you or the first media to use Steelbook packaging but it's kind of it's grown since then um, into this into this yeah bit of a collector's arena where they where they um, where they really go after these things probably in the same way that we do with with black series when an exclusive comes out and it's really limited and everyone's waiting for the pre-order and then people miss the pre-order and get a little bit upset and have rants about zavi or hmv or whoever else is releasing the uh the the exclusive so for those of you that aren't familiar with with steelbooks they're highly prized by collectors the the secondary market for them it's not as crazy as it used to be but you still see stuff going for over 100 pounds on ebay for some of the rarer titles and it's not just movies as well like i said there's video games and tv series they'll often you know if there's a special release or a new release coming out savvy will have an exclusive for it if it's popular enough and, and everyone will buy it up so although the edition sizes aren't generally kind of disclosed and i don't say what well, this is a run of 2000 they are generally very limited when compared to what you can buy in a supermarket for instance if you're buying a, i don't know a copy of um for ragnarok in, in tesco's generally the, the release by savvy is going to be far and away much rarer and harder to get hold of and much more sought after so they're the same the still books themselves are the same um standard dimensions as a as a blu-ray case um, and they've got a metal and back section um that are printed with art on both sides so the cover and the back of the case are printed on one side of the of the of the metal and then on the flip side the inners are then um printed on as well so the inside of the dvd case is like a um, transparent plastic so when the metal front and back are clipped onto the case you can see that image that reverse image through the inside of the case and that tends to be a an image across both sides so an example of the new hope release that came out a few weeks ago you've got darth vader and obi-wan the image from the movie of them fighting inside the case which kind of sits underneath the discs if you can if you can picture that but the artwork itself um is, is printed edge to edge um it's not the same as what's on general releases it tends to be either specially commissioned artwork for the release or it, the ones that i really go after the ones that use the theatrical movie posters so you know the classic movies from the the 80s and 90s tend to be where i am um, where i get most of those so i think in the, in the blog itself i pictured some of the ones i've got and robocop's one that i i particularly like at the minute i picked that recently so it's got that classic um poster of robocop stepping out of his car 
in all his 80s glory. In terms of the, the kind of the reverse of the case, it, again, it'll have an image on the back, but it won't have all of the usual blurb that you get on a on a DVD. So it wouldn't have the, the film certificates and the, you know, the, the, the sound bites from newspapers giving it five stars and the, the kind of plot summary. All of that's not included. That's on a on a separate insert that comes with the steel book that a lot of collectors just throw them away because they just want the, the steel book as it is to kind of sit in their collection in, in all of its glory. In terms of the, the Star Wars um, still books, there's been a few releases. So back in 2016, there was a run of episodes one to six. So that was to coincide with the Force Awakens still book coming out. Um, so each one of those had a character face on the cover. So episode one was Darth Maul. Um, episode three was General Grievous, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and on the reverse of each one was kind of a, a cropped image of the theatrical posters. So I didn't I didn't particularly like those. I already had the the complete saga Blu-ray box set and I wasn't really ready to trade up for those at that time. There was no new extras or anything like that on there. So I did skip those. But even up to that new 4K uh, or up until the new 4K releases coming out, they were still going for between 100 to 150 pounds a set on eBay. I suppose the other draw of Steelbooks is that they do they do have an intrinsic value, whereas, you know, you're. 12.99 dvd that you buy in tesco's you know you're probably getting six months time be able to get 30p for that if you were to trade it in whereas these t- tend to hold their their value a little bit more and then on the um uh, i suppose the other movies that have been released in the last few years so the the, the disney era movies they've all had still books released as well so zavi had those exclusives and they became available at midnight when each film was released for the last five years or so whenever i've gone to watch a midnight screening the last thing i did when i got home before i go to bed was was order that still book um <laughs> even before the, the cover art's been released so they'd have them up for pre-order with just like the film title and then you'd find out probably two or three months later what the case was actually going to look like you know there was a real demand for those and i think four out of the five movies all sold out ahead of the home release even before the artwork had been kind of revealed people had just, just snapped them up we've had still book releases for um, rebels um, series one and two and on the games front um, battle both battlefront games and jedi fallen order have had um, still book releases and then coming up to i suppose where we are today so in may Zabby put up a pre-order um, the 4k steel book for a new hope and yeah everyone went crazy for it it you know it started out at 29.99 to buy it at retail um, and within 24 hours they're on ebay and and, and going for 100 pound each although that's that's calmed down now and you could pretty much pick probably pick them up now on ebay for between 30 and 40 quid so i think there's a few people hedging their bets and maybe ordering multiple copies to put on ebay and they've probably come a bit of a cropper they haven't held that that high price and certainly not at the moment the, the, the dvd case itself's got the, the the style a artwork by tom young so it's the the version before the hildebrandt version with luke holding the lightsaber up in the air and darth vader's mask looming in the background and a fleet of x-wings flying towards the death star so it's a, it's a beautiful looking cover and on the reverse then is a, a high def image of r2 and 3po in terms of the discs themselves you get the 4k disc you get a blu-ray and then you get the disc of extras all of the commentaries of extra and extras have, have been released previously so i don't think there's anything particularly new there so if you've got previous releases and you're looking for new extras you're out of luck i'm afraid and then throughout the summer they continue with those pre-orders putting a different film up every week or every other week yeah culminating on the bank holiday weekend when they put rogue one and solo up for pre-order and all of them kind of follow the same theme so they've got a um, a theatrical um, poster on the front and then on the reverse an image from the from the movie itself of of a key character there was some disdain um, amongst the collectors over the empire strikes back cover i think a lot were hoping for that gone with the wind style um cover with with hand kissing Leia and Vader looming in the background yeah people got a bit upset with it said they were cancelling their pre-orders I think some people didn't realize that the teaser poster that was the cover was actually a a genuine poster and not just something that Xavi had cobbled together and so there was a lot of talk on eBay about this oh sorry on on Facebook about this being a, a genuine Star Wars poster so I think um yeah some people just needed a bit of educating there some people went as far though as buying magnetic covers. So on eBay, you can buy these these magnetic Blu-ray covers that you can put on your steel books to cover the artwork up that's that it's released on, which seems a little bit odd to me. But yeah, there's a few people out there doing that. Additionally, the on the Empire Strikes Back release, there was a manufacturing fault, and pretty much every copy had a big gouge and scratches across across the front of it. So yeah, everyone got a little bit upset about that on Facebook. But Xavi are putting that right and they're sending everyone a, a replacement cover out in the next few weeks at this point i've got six of uh, sorry five of the movies so far so i've got all of the original trilogy i've got episode one and attack of the clones and i've just had the notification that revenge of the sith is on its way and then the solo rogue one and the sequel and the sequel trilogy are all getting released between i think now and the end of november so yeah they'll start coming thick and fast soon 
I've owned Star Wars on a physical format all my life. So starting with when my mum and dad first started recording them off the TV for me, and then when I got older and I could buy my own, I think I've owned eight different versions of the original trilogy. So I've had I've had those original ones my mum and dad recorded for me. I've had four sets of VHSs. I had the 2004 DVD box set, and then yeah, the 2011 Blu-ray complete saga. And I was really on the fence about start buying Star Wars again. So I've got a Disney Plus subscription, which means I can access all of that. Amazon bought out a massive Skywalker saga box set at the beginning of the year which I had in my basket pre-ordered for months and then decided against it just purely because there was nothing new there and the packaging didn't really set me on fire it's an image of the Death Star which really doesn't signify the I suppose the the, it's not the emblem of the saga is it you think you'd come up with with a lightsaber at least or a Jedi or just something that's more in keeping with the trilogy itself you know it's a big part of a couple of the movies but it's not the whole the whole saga so I, I decided to to give that a swerve in the end but when I saw these blu-rays I, I couldn't resist it and I went in and I've bought up the old set it's quite, it cost quite a bit of 29.99 a pop I've managed to get some discount codes and things like that along the way but it's yeah, still quite a big investment but I think they look they look absolutely brilliant and and seeing the films in 4k I've got a 4k blu-ray player and it all looks it's so much better than than what you get through I don't know how good your broadband is but my, my, mine's pretty good but even having a direct DVD plugged into the TV you get such a better picture it looks it looks absolutely fantastic in in 4k and for me you know much like you know uh, an album cover for uh, uh, my favorite album the, the, the theatrical posters of these movies are as much as part Star Wars as the movie itself it's the iconography presented in those posters just sings Star Wars to me and just fills me with nostalgia and I've got quite a few of the posters, you know, they're rolled up and they're in the loft and I just haven't got the wall space to put them up. So these releases really just marry that theatrical image with the with the film itself. And, you know, just being able to have something I can touch and that's tangible for me is, is, is as important as, 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 as owning the movies just themselves. I think it's a, a great, a great, um, a great way of, of collecting those movie posters. It's so much better as well than what they've put out on the other single releases as well. So I don't know if any of you have seen the kind of standalone versions they bought out of each film but I think the the, the, the covers look terrible. They they all they're just more themed around colour than than the images on the films themselves and it's just such a waste of good artwork that they've gone in and decided to kind of cobble together these these montages for each of the film that just don't look particularly good. For me, physical media will always win over any kind of download media, you know, Netflix and uh, downloaded online and what have you. I, I like to have a shelf or several shelves full of DVDs or full of CDs or full of books. And I'm a sucker for special edition DVDs. I've got a few steel books myself. And I don't know, maybe it's a generational thing. Maybe I'm, I'm yeah. a generation where I appreciate actually owning a physical rendition of an album or a movie. I like to know that it's always there. When I pay money for something, I like to have an exchange, you know, I'll give you the money, you give me the thing. Whereas I think a lot of younger people these days, because life is very much kind of lived through a screen, that there isn't a physical media, there isn't a sort of transaction, as it were, not a physical one anyway. So in that sense, I, I, I'm completely on board with it. See exactly where you're coming from. I understand the value in it. But again, I think maybe it's our generation, Dan. I, I, I think that's where we're at with it. I think I've just I've just whittled down now to probably I've probably got about 40 films on steelbooks. And when you take the films that you, you see, because I think Star Wars drew me in so much into movies and it was that from a young age. But even then, as I got older, I've always loved film. I mean, you probably know I'm not a big fan of football. I don't really follow a football team. You know, movies is my football. And it's been really hard the last few months not being able to go go to the cinema and do all of that as like we used to and get a new film every week. But I love it. I, I just love movies and, and having kind of a representation of that film in a metal tin it's just yeah I just it just yeah makes me smile oh, I, I'm the same way mate I'm exactly the same I, I, I I'm not sporty in, in, in the sense how I support a football team or anything like that science fiction films fantasy you know that that kind of thing that is where mm. I'm at um, and I like and as a collector I like to have a collection I like to have a physical representation of stuff that I am into. And like I say, I like to have a shelf of CDs. I don't own an iPod or anything like that. When I listen to music, it's a CD that I'm putting into a CD player, not something that I'm typing up on screen and and playing through a computer or anything like that. I am really old school. And um, DVD, Blu-ray will probably be the last 
sort of physical media that we will see in relation to this this kind of thing where you know supermarkets and shops will sell physical uh, representation of a film so we're, yeah we we're right at the end of that kind of genre that kind of uh, era i guess i'm holding out for 8k i reckon that we're going to make 8k <laughs> In terms of, it will still be on physical, I think. I, I, I know what you're saying. It is so much of what we watch is throwaway. And when I look at all those, I mean, Stu mentioned about buying a thousand DVDs and having all these, you know, you just go out and you just buy them all the time. And you didn't really think about it too much. But I am now a lot more selective. And it's got to be the right case and the right movie. Otherwise, yeah, I'll, I'll skip it and I'll just watch it online. When I started going through my DVDs, because I bagged them all up in the end, I reckon I had um, hundreds still in cellophane, films that I'd never seen. And you're just like, what are you doing, mate? I've had the same with VHSs. It's just mental. But you're right. I, I, I'm one with both of you and Mark. I mean, physical media is where it's at still, isn't it? I still make the mistake. If I ever watch a film off the um, Sky Store, I was sitting there thinking, ah, oh, extra three quid. I can have the disc come through the post as well. <laughs> so I still do that. And that's even on films that I've already got somewhere. <laughs> That's why they turn up and you're just like the kids' films I get because you can sit them in their bedroom with them. But yeah. What did you What did you think of the the the, the poster selections for these these uh, eleven movies they've brought out? Do you think they've made the right choice? That Empire one in particular was controversial to some. Yeah, should have been the Gone with the Wind poster in my opinion. Yeah, I can't disagree, but I do like that that poster. And if you take episodes one to nine, take Solo and Rogue One away, you've kind of got then Vader right in the middle of it all in the image of nine posters, which I think is quite emblematic of the of the saga. A great blog post, Dan, and like I would urge other people to um to go and, and get involved and have a little read and uh, lots and lots and lots of images over on the blog post. No, I found it really fascinating. I you know, I knew Steelbooks existed. I didn't realise there was such a kind of uh, fan base for them. The fact that people create magnetic covers to replace art that people didn't didn't love i just found (laughs) fascinating but i get it i totally totally get it i really understand where you're coming from in my physical media i mean i've got a load of star wars on you name it i've got laser discs and all kinds of stuff but yeah i i'm totally on board with it i really understand where you're coming from and they are beautiful objects one question i do have from a practical point of view is Mm. you know these things on the shelf sliding them in and out they're metal yeah Bust are they? Do they scratch? Do they chuff up your bookcases? I do. I don't pack them in, so I wouldn't, you know, push them. You know, you used to, you had to cram that last DVD in, didn't you, when you were trying when you had your bookshelf full up and you'd you'd ram it in. So I wouldn't do that. And I've also got some uh, transparent slip cases, which are really cheap off of uh, off of Amazon. And yeah, they kind of fold together and they're just like a little slip case they sit in. Some people will just um, put them in like a little plastic cellophane sleeve um others will keep the j cards on them which offers a bit of protection as well but yeah i go for the uh the little slip cases makes sense nice dan well done and uh nice to see someone else do a blog post